Hi, I'm Ben Hunt, and today I have with me Ken McGuffin, who I will let introduce himself, I think is the best way. Okay. Hi, I'm Ken McGuffin, and one of the things that really drives me is promotion. And how do you actually get your message across to people, and how do you get people to your site? And there's all sorts of ways of doing that. One of the specialties that I have is online public relations and link building which is fantastic because it's purely based on business skills. And what I want to talk about and show you is how your existing business skills can make you the ideal link builder. So, thanks Ken. So, what we're wanting to do today is in the space of one hour to give everyone the complete exact step-by-step -step guide of what you need to do to launch a new website successfully or to take a site that has maybe have been online for a while and is doing nothing, and how to bring it to life. Okay, so we're going to try and cover literally end to end each of those important steps. So we've we've broken it down into kind of six phases, and we're going to start off really by just just saying um, that I think there's there's a sense that. People have been bewildered for a long time about the web. The web is only 20 or so years old. And as a, a mass medium, it's really still a teenager. And I, I think that there's a lot of us out there who have paid for websites from web designers in the past. And these days may have been paying SEO companies to try and get them up the rankings and bring them traffic, who really feel like they've been burned. And I think people have been burned and I think you know, it's still going on and some of us have been burnt several times. But I think the world is moving on. I think the, uh, I'm hoping clients, customers are becoming more sophisticated. And one of the things I want to achieve in, 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 these, uh, in this video is to help people not to be bewildered by the technology. Because the technology really is now you know, coming into the hands of, of, of everybody. You know, yeah. We've got very powerful, the, the technology on your phone today is a publishing platform Absolutely. in itself. Absolutely. Yeah. Because one of the things I think that is that uh, it isn't the heart of that type of problem. It's not that there's just a load of um, bad professionals out there offering bad advice. What it is, is it's usually a lack of communication. And that comes from the business, maybe not understanding what they're asking for or how it all works together. And perhaps the designer themselves not having the insight into the business language. So one of the things that is really important is how, how do we solve that problem? How do we take the mystique away so that people end up talking a simple, common language and they understand what this is all about? And I think as the web has matured, then business principles are coming to the fore and business language is coming. And so if we can talk in simple concepts like that, then I think there's no reason for that mismatch, uh, that lack of communication to happen. In fact, solving that, solving that is the biggest possible thing that you could do to move along to success on the web. Yeah. And, and we, we want to take away the, the image of the, the web professional or consultant being up there in their tower in you know dealing in some kind of black magic that nobody else can really understand because at the bottom line there is nothing really difficult going on here the process of getting a website published is now a snap it mm -hmm. really is that simple these days and, and it's been getting easier and easier and quicker and cheaper over time remember it, it's not long since we had to pay hundreds for a domain name and hundreds for hosting and thousands to have somebody craft a website by hand and if you wanted to edit it yourself you'd better have very very deep pockets now today all that's out the window we've got cheap hosting good hosting we've got cms platforms like wordpress that make it so much easier but still there is a sense that some web professionals you know would rather and i, I don't want to bring the whole the whole sector down the whole industry down but I think some web professionals are quite happy to keep that element of mystique. And for business owners out there, I, I don't, I really don't think that does them any favors. So, you know, we, we want to pull back the curtain in, in, in this video 
and show you, show the you know the business owner that this is just marketing. This is stuff you've probably already been doing. Web design is marketing, yeah, and it shouldn't be scary. Yeah. So take the mystique away, and you allow that communication to happen. It will be the the web design will be better as a result of that. And the relationship between the designer and the business person will be better too. Yeah, and and we we've been talking about this at length about whether we actually still need a web design industry, whether we still need search engine professionals. And I think we we've come to a consensus that we do, but that the role moves on. So you know what you can. You can take components, these fantastic yeah. tools that okay. we've got today, yeah. and combine them in a way that you can get a website up on the web quite easily, quite quickly, and quite cheaply. But so that 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 technological step has gotten a lot shallower. But as more people are coming online, there's a lot more websites out there. The challenge of getting seen and getting people to buy your message, buy you. Is is you know there's more noise today, so you know while the the technical side of getting the website up and on the web is is becoming trivial, the marketing challenge has, if anything, become greater as competition goes up. Yeah, uh, absolutely, and solve that, and you solve most of the problems that businesses have with their websites. And I think um, again, you mentioned it. You know, this is really all about marketing, and so. For any business that's just starting off, that's where I would say, let's focus in on your market, first of all, particularly your customers. What are your customers looking? And again, sometimes we think, you know, in this world of viral marketing and huge initiatives, we think what we need is a really terrific, fantastic idea that's going to go viral and spread throughout the web. That's not the case for the great majority of businesses. Wonderful if you can pull it off and pull it off profitably, but for most of us, that's not what we need to do. What we need to do is provide very good help and information to our potential customers, build a relationship with them, and then sell them a fantastic product. That's what it's all about. And so for any project that I start, I'm very interested in finding out what the customer needs are. And here's a great exercise that any business person can do over two weeks and it will give them a huge amount of real stuff that they can start working on. So let's take your customer queries that come in, keep a diary. Note down every query that you answer during the working day. Get your customer service staff to do the same thing. Do that over a two week period and then pool all of that material together. Or if you have salespeople out there. Salespeople, in, absolutely. On, on the street or, or whatever. Say, get them together. You know, the, the mar if marketing isn't talking to the customer service department and, and sales department, then you, you, you're throwing gold out the window because that, what I get from what you're saying is the customer's questions, their concerns, their queries, this is the cornerstone of your marketing. Uh, uh, absolutely. And it, listen, the answers just have to be useful. They don't have to be spectacular. So, Ken, would you would you agree with me that marketing is about doing simple things right and consistently, and that when marketing gets clever and smart and intelligent, it also tends to fail. More. Well, it gets a lot riskier. Yeah. There's no there's no doubt about that. And I think if you're just starting in this whole environment and you really want to push your website forward. The best way to do that is in safe steps forward. Simple steps that make great business sense. So, so step, step one is keeping a record, a log, of all of these queries and questions that come in. Yes, from as many people as you can, from your salespeople, from your customer service people, from your own chatting to customers. And, and for what kind of length of time would you propose? Right. We said do that for two weeks, and then once you've got them, that list, then pull everybody together. Let's have a morning going through this. Put a couple of flip charts up and then categorize all the things that you find out. Build them into groups. So how much was it, with, uh, how much was it about getting started uh, with your product? How much was it being able to use 
the product? How much was it making silly mistakes with their product and trying to rectify that? So group all of those into whatever groups that you want. And then that gives you the basis of writing blog posts. Now, there's nothing particularly special about a blog post other than you're writing to solve a particular problem. So it's always great to do it um, in a conversational style. Imagine you're just talking to the customer. That's a great way. That's a great to write. tip for copywriting generally. Yeah, uh, Speak absolutely. to the customer as though you were speaking to a friend. Uh, uh, Use the same language. Absolutely. No. So, so step one, keep a log of all this stuff. Then you analyze it and look for patterns and groupings and clusters. That's so it. what are the common concerns? What are the common desires? That's it. And then make yourself a list of blog posts that you could write on that. And let's just say we were starting off and we, and we had um, 10 posts all together. Well, that's great. Then write those 10 posts. Now, what do we want to do with those? Well, it's two choices. The first is you can publish them on your own site. And the second thing you can do is publish them on external sites as guest posts. Now, one of the ways to do this is to split them in two. So publish five on your own site and uh, publish the other five on external sites. How do you get onto external sites? Well, it's really easy to find guest posting opportunities. Mm -hmm. Then you submit your article to any blog that is relevant and looks good um, to yourself and, and say, here's a blog post here that would you publish it? Now, there's a great deal goes on because what you do is you give the blogger useful uh, material, which is great, but your business gets itself publicized because not only you're talking about the, the problems that your customers have had, you're talking about how that's solved. And of course you get the all important link back to your site. So for people who are coming to this completely new, learning how to write good blog posts and persuading other sites to carry those and publish those with a link back, is probably the most effective method of link building that you can do if you're on a tough budget. Because the, the number of websites that I've seen where there's a small business and they've clearly paid thousands, one, two, three, four years ago, however, however long ago it was, they've paid thousands for a website and I look at the link profile and it's a technical term, but you know I, I'm looking at how well represented their site is on the rest of the web, which is something that search engines use as the primary yes. indicator of how interesting or useful a site is likely to be. But I see so many sites and they've got links from only two or three or mm -hmm. less than 10 other websites. Yeah. And, and you say to a business owner, well, that's why you're not coming up on the rankings. And, and it's a big surprise. And what you're talking about is a way of getting links from five different websites already, which in some cases could be enough to get you onto that holy grail of page one of the results, right? Uh, absolutely, and there's a, a, a little phrase. Um, publishing a website without links is a bit like winking to someone in the dark. You know what you're doing, but they don't. <laughs> and you've really got to engage and make, make sure that people know what you are doing. Now, link building itself, and there's a little bit of mystery about link building, um, and let's just look at that simply. I think there's three major benefits of link building. First of all, it will push you up uh, the Google rankings. That's great, and you'll get additional traffic. But my favorite thing about link building is if I have links out on the web pointing to my site, then people will click on those and arrive at my website. So people follow links like cars follow road signs. So all those road signs, i.e. links pointing to your site, will bring people direct. And I think that's mm. fantastic. And then the third thing which you alluded to is if you have good links pointing to your site, it builds your reputation within your marketplace. So those things are really important. So that's SEO, mm. which brings you more traffic through the search engines, um, direct links, which bring you people clicking through on those links to arrive at your site, and then Third, it raises your reputation and your profile within your industry. Mm -hmm. And you know what? 
it can all be free if you put the time and effort into doing it properly. Mm. So we've got different ways that people can find your site. I mean, obviously the, the purpose of all of this is yes, to attract more people to your website, but then also to get them to do something when they arrive. There's no point uh, advertising free, free money and then loads of people follow the links and then you say, no, it's just a trick to get you here because none of them will stay and none of them will actually engage with you or trust you or do that. So you've got to fulfill the promise of however people get to you. Absolutely. So is there a preference between getting people from search results or getting people who follow links from other sites? Is one more valuable than the other? Well, they're sl slightly different. But if someone comes to your site from uh, a, a search engine, you're going to see that you scored well in the, in the results. So that in itself um, it, it is a little bit of an endorsement of your site is, if that is the case. Though, of course, my favorite is those people that follow the links mm. because that's what I love. And I think they can be incredibly important because the people who click through are actually pre-qualified to buy from you. Why? Because they've read about you on another website. You've been featured in an article or you've shared something uh, very, very interesting. So what they're saying is, ooh, this person is interesting. This website is interesting. And they click that link with a very positive attitude. And I love that positive priming of link building. So, so it's sort of like a warmer lead because you're getting some of the glow of the reputation of the site that links to you, that, that provided that link so that they could find you as well. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and um, on the work that I've done, um, major website, 35% of the traffic that we got on a daily basis came from links, just people clicking on links. Now you just think of it, 35% of your business coming to your website without you having to do anything, but because you created links. Mm. And that to me is just fantastic. Yeah, free, free traffic, free, free traffic. business. Yep, wonderful stuff. So let's, let's recap just a little bit. You need to get a website, you need to have it on WordPress platform. Don't let somebody charge you thousands and thousands for the privilege of having a, a site on the web. It's cheap mm -hmm. and easy, right? But you've got to have a plan in place of how you're going to get your site noticed. Yes. So let's just quickly run over the, the, the features of a website. Obviously, you know, your homepage should neatly summarize who you are, what you do, who you do it for, and importantly, what makes you different? Why should I care as a visitor? The, um, I, I, I like talking about the concept of the, the herd or the, you know, the shoal of fish or a flock of birds, because in nature, the, we have you know, a herd. So you've got thousands of wildebeest all together. The reason that they huddle together is for safety, so that it makes it harder to notice an individual. There's a, a Russian proverb that says, if you try, a man who tries to catch two rabbits won't catch either one, <laughs> right? So you've got to be able to pick something out in order to, to chase it. So the herd is there to stop you as an individual from being noticed. But in marketing, that's, all, that's the worst thing we can do. You've got to be noticed. You've got to stand out. There's no point if you are in, you know, you're an electrician and somebody looks at the market for electricians and everybody looks exactly the same. They're all standing toe to toe along this line and there's no way to tell any of them apart. But if you stand out, literally stand out for some reason, give people a reason to notice you and to engage with you, very important. So one of the biggest mistakes, and I review a lot of websites, what, one of the biggest mistakes I see is website literally being, seems to be afraid to say what is special about us and why you should care. Yes. And it seems to be um, sterile. Yes. And, and a lack and of it, humanity. Or it, uh, it, it, it lacks passion emotion, or it's yeah, boring. Yeah. And nobody buys from boring. You know, uh, nobody links to boring. And so the last thing you can be is boring. But let's let's take a, take examples of the most boring pages on any website. It can often be about us and contact us. Crucial, crucial um, pieces of information. Mm. Yet people freeze up a little bit when they start writing those pieces, and sometimes they're incomprehensible and indistinguishable 
from other websites. Like there, there's nothing that stands out from that. And so I think what the business person has got to do is let their passion show. Concentrate on your passion. Never mind about tell them where you were born and how long you've been in business. Nobody cares. People care about what you do and what you can do for them. So let that passion come right out. In our education, we're, we're taught when we write essays to build up to the argument and then the argument comes right at the end. No, no, no. That's the, the get, wrong way to write copy get for them Martin. Big message right at the, at, at, at the front. And people should see that message immediately. They should understand what it's about. And okay, now that I've done that, now that you've got my interest, yes, I'm interested in reading some more. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more about the passion. The, the number of About Us pages that, that you look at and you think, well, I couldn't tell you what site this was about. So if, just a few little things that you should never do. You don't have to welcome somebody to a website yeah. because it's on the World Wide Web. It's public. It's already there. Of course, they're welcome. Right. So, so you can skip the number of sites you get where you land on a home page and, and it says it, it wastes the headline of the whole site as saying welcome to our website. OK, so you can you can forget about that. Don't talk about this. Another pet peeve of mine, if you'll you know, excuse me, um, when people talk about their goal or their mission or their aim, our aim is 100% customer satisfaction tells you absolutely nothing because, you know, that may be your aim. You may be missing it by a factor of 75%. You know, so, so don't say what your goal or your aim or your mission is. We, nobody cares about your goal and aim and mission. Sure. Tell them what you care about. Absolutely. You know, so, I am the I am the president, and it's, it's good as well to, to to speak as a human being, not as a faceless group. I, and what this is my passion. I set up this company in order to, or the reason I bought this company was, or you know, I believe that this is the one product that you can rely on. And if you don't, you send it back to me, and I'll give you your money back. Oh, well, tell your story. Yeah. Let people share it. Now, one. Great example of this in action is warbyparker.com, which sells spectacles. Nothing special about spectacles, but go to their website. It's beautifully designed and it's beautifully written because they engage with people. And their our story piece is five pages long, but it's five pages of really interesting stuff that shows their passion and shows why they're in business why they're indifferent. And if you want inspired, there's a terrific example to look at. Fantastic. And uh, it also reminds me of brands like Jack Daniels as well. It, it seems to be all their marketing is based on their story. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, another so, example with a lot their, of alcohol coming Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know, let me start. <laughs> and another example, of course, is uh, the ambassador program from Maker's Mark uh, Bourbon. And again, it's a great example of how you can build a community for your product. And that community is going to be not only loyal to you, but they're going to be advocates out there. And guess what? A percentage of them will have blogs and they'll write stuff and they can link to you. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so so what should be on your website? A homepage that, that neatly summarizes what's distinctive about you, not what's the same about you as everyone else. But it needs to draw a neat line around everything you do, right? Your about page should have passion in it. It should give people a reason to like you because that's why you click on an about page. It's like, can I trust these guys? Can I believe in these guys? And there's not many things you know about the person at the other end of the line that's looking at your website. Right? We can find out certain things. One thing you know is they're human. Okay, so they've got heart and feelings and desires and they... You know, they care about stuff and they get angry about stuff and they get passionate about stuff, right? The same way that any of us do. So, and, and without an emotional engagement, nobody's going to respond to, right. to a website in any way. That's right. Um, the other that, thing that you know is that they're not you. Yes. That's just about the only other thing you know. They, they're not exactly the same as you. So, you know, talk about them. Talk about what's important to them, what you want for them. And they, um, they will respond to that more than you just talking only about yourself. Absolutely. And that's hearts back 
to the customer queries exercise because that's the way that you understand what your customers are about. And if you bear that in mind, when you're writing copy, when you're explaining to people what your website is about, then it's fantastic. So that success in marketing is all about them. It's all about those customers. Those customers. Yeah. Yep. And, and the language that you use as well, you can learn an awful lot from the vocabulary and the choices of words that people actually tell you that they're using even though they may be incorrect from you know within the industry within the sector that you're in but you know you should always aim to use the language that your prospects and customers are using to describe their problems and needs and opportunities and, and the solutions that, that they need um, don't just stick to the official vocab book Yes, you've got to find out what your cust the words that your customers are using. They're called keywords, and that's really a very simple definition of a keyword. It's just a set of words that people in enter into a search engine when they're trying to find products like yours. That's it, simply. And often, there's an internal language that we all have our, 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 our jargon, our shortcuts that we use. But you and I could talk at length using jargon, but people out there wouldn't understand what we'd be talking about at all. So you've got to put aside your in-house jargon and you've got to use the words that people use. It's like when you go to a foreign country. Um, if you try speaking your own language in a foreign country, well, you will get some people that might understand you, but mm -hmm. the great majority won't. If, however, you make the effort to speak the foreign language, then what do people think of you? They'll welcome you, they'll be happy, you'll see smiles on their faces because you're making an effort to talk their language. Mm. And I think in business on the way up, it's the same thing. Don't talk your language, talk the language of your potential customers. And if you do that, you'll find your customers reacting in a very positive way. Great, great. So that, that will help that communication to happen more easily. The, the emotional connection as yes. well. Um, so I remember you said something a little while ago when you said you take these subjects that we got from uh, analyzing our, our questions and concerns from the, the customer base and you publish some blog posts. Mm -hmm. Now, I would imagine that a lot of people will uh, feel a degree of fear and anxiety about what, what you said then. So we're just going to publish 10 blog posts and then we're going to get them out there on the web. So I think we, I think I'd like to examine what we mean by just publish some blog posts. So we are assuming that you've got a site that may be built on the WordPress platform and you know, you click add new post and select what category it's going to be in. But, um, Exactly, you know, what help can we offer people to say how to go about it? How do you select your title? What you, you've just talked about keywords. Um, where and how should you use these keywords? For example, let's, 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 let's start with those. Right, I, th I think that's, that's, that's a very good question because there's, there's, there's a real depth to this in terms of, well, how do you go about doing that, putting those articles together. I think, particularly for time-starved businesses, there is nothing better than writing customer-focused material that addresses their problems. But what you can then do is make sure that you've got meaningful titles. Like, for instance, here are our new products as a statement is not very informative at mm. all. It doesn't tell a search engine what the site is about. And that's what the search engine looks at. So you're not giving the search engine spider any additional information. And, this no, is and nobody's typing about. into Google. That's I'm right. I'm new products today. That, 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 that's right. But if it's mountain bikes that you offer, well, see our new mountain bike range. That's got the keyword. <laughs> mountain bike in it. And so read more is another one. 
that that is crazy. Read more about our new mountain bikes. It is a benefit because it's got a keyword. So they they were talking about links when you link from one page to another. One page to another. Never use read more. Yeah. In, well, yeah. If if unless if you can help it, or the dreaded words click here. That's right. Well. <laughs> um, who ranks number one for? For click here, I think it's Adobe. I'm not sure. I, I think it's Adobe.com for the um, Acrobat Reader. Oh, right. Okay. If you do a search on Google for click here, because so many people say, if you haven't got the Acrobat Reader, click here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know, because the content of that link, the thing that you can actually click on to go to the other page, is telling the search engine, it's yeah. giving it a clue about what that next page is about. Yeah. And I made the analogy earlier on that people follow links like cars follow road signs. You could stretch that analogy to say, well, you've got to put the place name on that sign. You've got to know what that sign is about. So if you put a keyword in it, then people will know where that that link is going to lead to. Yeah, we don't have road signs saying this way. That's right. <laughs> it says it's going to a particular location. Absolutely. Fantastic. So you talked about Titles now, so every page on the web has a title, and that that isn't necessarily what's displayed on the page. It's the one that it's the text that you see in the browser bar or the tab there. But you also see it when you search in the search engines yes. as the link to back to the the page. And this is one reason why titles are very very important. And there's the the other element which is called the meta description. Again, this is a description of what the page is about that is embedded within the, the web page but isn't, isn't visible on the page. And those two together, the title and the description, in, in Google search results, certainly, that, that is what you get as yes. coming up as the search result. This is, this is really Search Engine 101. You know, anybody that knows anything about search engines will be doing this type of thing. And the surprising thing is there are many, many, many millions of websites out there who aren't following this. And by starting to use keywords in your title tags and in your description is going to already set you uh, a, a, a aside. But particularly if you make the description uh, a call to action mm. saying sign up here for our mountain bike newsletter or we provide a fantastic range of mountain bikes then that's giving the potential visitor more information and the more information you give them the more likely they are to come through now here's a simple exercise to do that take a few of your keywords and search on google and you know what look at the results and i don't mean just scan the results Really look at the results. Which ones do you find appealing? Which would you click on? Absolutely. Where do the keywords, how are they highlighted by Google? And just by looking at that, you will find out, right. wow, there, there's an education there. And then click through on the, and look at the page and look how they're using that term on the page. And so the great thing about Google, I think, is all of this sort of stuff is open. You can do the searches for the keywords and then you can go and have a look and learn from them and right. then do as well yourself. So, yes, yeah, important to get the keywords in that title. However, don't ruin the purpose of the title. Don't wreck Absolutely. it by trying to stuff the same keywords Absolutely. in or, or even worse, by saying the same thing four times if it's slightly different words that, or separated with pipe signs or something that's unreadable. It should be a single, yeah. readable, friendly, uh, accessible phrase, right? Absolutely. Don't, um, really, don't obsess about keyword density. It's not important. Keyword knows that you're on, uh, a keyword means that you're writing about this subject, and that's grand. But do not repeat it, repeat it, and repeat it, because that's just bad practice. Mm. It won't help you in the search engines. And then the way that the search engines are going, and you can rely on them continuing down that path, is that if it's going to be good for people, that they Absolutely. will reward it, and it will be good for Google. That's the way it's going. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're measuring all kinds of things, and all kinds of things that we may not even be able to imagine right now. 
But you know, Google knows an awful lot. And if you go Google Analytics on your website as well, it knows a lot about how people are engaging on your site. Yes, but again, you know, there's no real particular mystery to this. And I think, don't be afraid of making mistakes. You know, if you made a mistake, and you realize you've made a mistake, then you learn from it. So as you're writing your 10 blog posts, we'll try different keywords, see mm -hmm. how that works, and then see whether it brings you traffic or not. You'll be able to see that through um, yeah, your Google Analytics or your log files or whatever. You'll get a feel for what, what, what keywords are working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and don't, I would say two, two other things. Don't expect results overnight. Mm -hmm. I've got, pages that I published on my website that got a little bit of traffic and a little bit of traffic and, and two years later after they were published suddenly became popular. I don't know why, it just happened. So you know, don't expect results overnight and the, the other thing is don't sit there and stare at the graphs and stare at the numbers. There's very few things that actually matter, right, which is to do with Who's, who's linking to me now, you know? What's, what's changed? The way that SEO is working now is that it is driven by customer requirements and your understanding of a customer. And it's, you can't engineer links in the same way as you could. So just concentrate on satisfying your customer and using keywords appropriately, just mm -hmm. right good content. To almost pretend like search engines aren't there. Almost. <laughs> Brilliant. Fantastic. So, okay, we've talked about the title. It should be engaging. It, it, it's, it's primarily, we're talking about journalism and marketing, marketing copywriting, not copywriting for the benefit of the search engines. So That's right. Get people's attention, make them want to read on. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when we say write a blog post, I think a lot of people out there are going to be going, I can't write. So, and, and I, I think that's quite common. I think it's yeah. a big fear among people. So I think we should give some tips for right. okay. people I, I who, think, who think they can't write. I think a, 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 a lot of, there's a lot of points here. The first thing is they might be wrong. People are scared of writing. You know, you look at a blank page and it stares back at you and you're thinking, gosh, how am I ever going to start? So you could, sometimes you could trick your brain a little bit. And I used to train lots and lots and lots of um, uh, business people uh, in writing for the web. And I remember they hated the whole idea of sitting down and actually writing. But if you actually got people to talk about their business, it's impossible to shut them up. They'll tell you all about their business. It's fantastic because their passion's coming out when you have a conversation. So one little thing. And we've already said that copywriting should be conversational in style. Absolutely. So here's one little trick that, that, that could work. Interview yourself. Sounds crazy. But imagine you're being interviewed by a journalist and write down five questions you would like that journalist to ask. you. And when you've got a list of them, hmm, that's grand. Then just answer those questions, and there you have a blog post. Mm -hmm. and right. It's that simple, and the reason that works, it just is a little device to get away from the fear of the empty page, mm -hmm. and that's really important. Something that I find quite convenient and useful as well, and um, I know a lot of people do, is I use this, this piece of advanced technology called yeah. a pencil and, and paper. Um, it can be a lot more intimidating to sit in front of a blank computer screen with a little cursor blinking at you, saying, all right, now start typing. I find it personally a lot easier to take a piece of paper to say, right, this I think is gonna be my headline, and then these are the five points I'm going to make in the article. And once I've done that, then I'll just fill in the gaps. Yeah, that's right. It's like you the wireframe model, yeah. and then you just have to you know, the clay on top. Absolutely. And when and you've done if, that, it's more or less written. Yeah, if you've got that outline, and the, 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 that's really what to think about. What's the outline of the article? Spend your time planning that. And once you've planned it, and you're happy with that, then you are just filling in the blanks. So you've got five paragraphs, you know what each paragraph is about, 
all I've got to do is write a couple of little sentences for each one. And hey presto, you can write an article very quickly if you follow that. But the idea is to do the outline first and be sure what it is that you're going to write. After you've done that, then the actual writing is easy. Another nice tip as well is, um, which I think a lot of us will find easy, is to write, it, it doesn't have to be prose. You could write a list of stuff, right? And it can still be very appealing for people to want to come and read. People love lists. We all love lists. 29 easy ways to save money this Christmas. And you just sit there with a piece of paper one evening, you know, with your feet over a chair, and just dump your brain out onto the paper. Make it, a, make it really, really easy. And then just write it, type it up into a list. Just a numbered list. And here's rule number one. And then say something about it. And that's not that's not article writing. That's not journalism. Mm-hmm. Well, anyone can do it. Yeah, and 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 again, there are little exercises that can do that. So, um, I remember uh, doing a piece on real wood uh, barbecues uh, mm-hmm. instead of using charcoal, using real wood, and uh, I did a search on Google News for newspaper articles on that topic. And then once you find a newspaper article, well, take three or four articles from quality newspapers. So something like the New York Times, the Washington Post, something from the BBC or the Guardian in the UK. Print those articles out and then take your pencil and work through those articles. And every time you see something of interest, a little phrase, oh, cedar produces X, Y, and Z flavor, for Mm -hmm. instance. Then go through your articles, go through them carefully. A lot of us really scan articles now. We're so busy. We scan them, print these three or four articles off, and go through them carefully, actually absorbing what you're learning. You will get a huge number of concepts, first of all, which is really interesting, which all could be ideas for blog posts. That's great. You'll also get a list of keywords that you should be including in your um, copy as well as you're writing throughout your site, but also you'll get to understand the market very well because those quality pieces have usually been very well written by a journalist. They've been approved by an editor. So they're usually good content. And the facts have been checked and the sources and everything Ab- else. That Ab- you can Ab- borrow. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the blog post, you know, you could, you could get a nice um, feature piece from a newspaper or a newspaper magazine or something like that. A blog post doesn't need to have 200 tracks in it. A blog post can be about one thing, mm-hmm. you know, how much, how does cedar wood, should I use cedar wood for my wood fire barbecue, yes. right? Great, great question. Um, and you could just, you could write that up. So how long does a blog post need to be? My answer generally is long enough and no longer, or, you know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you, you, you know. I have to I, make your point. You don't have to fill it out. You don't, you don't have, have to, to do 2,000 words. It's not a, a school essay. No, and that, and that really depends on, on, on what you're comfortable with. What do you want to achieve with uh, your, your blog post? Now, if it's a single piece of information, and I think that's a great way to be thinking about blogs. Well, that's uh, one way to do that. However, if I was to do a post on um, maybe um, 10 real woods and their effect on flavor, mm. and that might turn into a 2,000-word article because mm. there's... 10 different woods that I want to write on them. That. So it really depends on the context of the piece that you're writing. Long and the short of it is, there is no long blog post and long, short blog post requirement. You do what you feel like doing at that time. Of course, it's great to mix and match. And the other thing is that you want to become an expert at writing. You want to learn how to write. So you can write quickly, you can write to the point, you can write well mm. and practice. And just to important, yeah, and to and, and just making yourself do it, just discipline. Yes, get up, get up in the morning, write something. That's it. And um, the other element I'll add in there, which is really important, listen to the feedback, see what people say about your post. When I publish an article online, as soon as it's published, I've got an hour set aside just to see what the reaction is because that reaction can come in very quickly. Mm. Um, particularly if I'm publishing on a very popular site. And so I want to be there in front of my, my screen so that when there is a comment, then I can come in and reply. 
because then that helps me set the agenda, deal with any problems, correct any mistakes at an early stage so that people can see I'm engaged and I'm interested mm. uh, in what I'm writing about. So there's, there's definitely a theme coming through a lot of what we're saying, whether we're talking about writing, publishing, marketing, business in general, you know, we, we've got two ears and one mouth. So we've got to listen, we've got to learn, we've got to keep our eyes and ears open to what is going on around us and base our decisions and our actions on the reality of what's really going on around yes. Because the, the answers are there. There's no great mystery to marketing. It's about real people and what they really want and letting them have it. Yes, and then I, I think there's a leap of faith that is required right at the start, which is then um, borne out by um, evidence. And that is, you've got to trust that writing this stuff is going to work. This is not something separate from your business. It is part of your business. When you're doing business online, you've got to, as part of your market, write about what you're doing. And it will bring you sales. Mm. And, and it's, it's great. And I fell into this by accident because I just published this stuff. But there, there's some big advantages to writing. And one of them, I think, is... And I, I've been writing this blog for eight years. I've published three books now. Mm -hmm. Every time you sit down to write a post about something, I think it helps you to solidify your idea. Mm -hmm. And then once you've done that and you've published it, you can then kind of almost stand on that and it, it moves your thinking along to, to get it down in print in some way. And there's a couple of other tips uh, that I want to give for when, you, when you're writing articles. And this, this first one's really, really helpful, which is just keep it simple. Keep it short, right? Um, intelligent people understand simple language. You know, everyone understands simple words. So keep your sentences short with one point per sentence. Keep your words as short as possible. Don't use three words if one will do. I would also say, this is my personal practice, I don't, I tend not to ever have more than two sentences in a paragraph on the web because I want to make it quick and easy to read. You don't want long lines, you don't want big chunks of text. So just keep it really simple and keep the, the most meaningful words at the front of a sentence. Say it the simplest way you can. Whatever you've got to do, make it simple, make it obvious, um, make it impossible to misunderstand. Yes. Great. So the the other tip that I would give, and I'd like, love to get your opinion on this from a perspective of PR and promotion and, and link building, is to have an opinion if you've got an opinion. And don't hide your your passion about a topic. Mm. If you think that something is outrageous, I think it's okay to say it's outrageous. Yes. If you think that people are being ripped off, say people are being ripped off. Yes. How uh, well does that work? Uh, uh, I, I, I think it, it works um, absolutely correctly because people get excited or energized by your opinion. Going middle of the road and being boring is not going to get you much attention at all. Because nobody's going to care about you. That's right. But if your opinions are strong and passionate, then people can either agree or disagree. But that interaction is fantastic because there's always discussion and always links about that. And in any aspect of life, there's always different points. So never be afraid of sharing your opinion because it's that opinion that says who you are and it's that opinion that will get you links. And it gives people a reason to connect with you on an emotional level. Very much so. Even if it's negative. Yes. But it will get you noticed. Now I know that some people deliberately go out of their way to cause arguments and to stir up wars of you know discussion online. Um, I think my, my tip would be if you aren't prepared to to defend a particular point, then you know, then don't don't go there. Yeah, I, 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 you've got to, I, be able to do it with integrity. I think, and I, it's a difficult thing to do well. So, and and for many businesses, to tell you the truth, I think it's unnecessary to do that. And so, look, when you talk about creating great content for your customers, you do that exercise. You've got so much to write about anyway. 
you don't want to be sitting back and uh, thinking about well, what controversial things that um, uh, can you come up with? Mm. But here's another exercise that I would use to follow um, my, my customers, and that is um, in your industry, there's always some controversy. So list five to ten pieces of controversy in your industry, the way that business is done, what works, what doesn't work, but, but look for that controversy and then have your opinion about it and use that as a way of polishing your opinion. So if someone asked you, what would you think about this, that you then have an answer mm -hmm. for that. And mm -hmm. again, that helps direct your writing to something that's interesting, something that's worthwhile. And again, allows your opinion to come out to the fore. Mm. And that's what attracts links. That's what get, gets your attention. And that's what allows you to engage with people. I remember I, I rewrote a, an article on behalf of one of my clients a few months ago. And it was very dry. And it was written from the perspective. It was written like a, a press release. Uh -huh. Okay. Now... What I did was I, I looked at the stuff and I thought, well, that's interesting, that's interesting, and that's interesting if we make it relevant and applicable to people. So I rewrote it and it I rewrote it as the three biggest myths about. Yes. And okay. I just yep. turned the meaning slightly and changed some of the language and it became a much more compelling article. Absolutely. So it should be compelling. I'll tick you up on one point, though, and that is uh, that it read like a press release. Well, it, really, it read like a bad press release. It read like a bad <laughs> press release. Because yeah. again, and I, 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 I think it's one of those things, people churn out bad press releases. Well, they don't set out to be bad, but they churn out press releases without thinking them through. Why would anybody be interested in this? Why would a journalist write about this? What's newsworthy about this? What's going to catch people's attention? Mm -hmm. And so the great majority of press releases that are sent up end up in the trash because they're nonsense. They, they don't mean anything mm -hmm. other than, here's a company, I want some publicity. You're not going to get it. Mm -hmm. You again have to have something that's newsworthy, uh, something that is appropriate to the journal that you're targeting. And you know what? It's easy, easy to come up with stuff like that think about your own passion, you think about your experiences, you think about the major issues in your industry, and you can come up with a story. And keep in touch with the real people, with your customers, their prospects, what they care about, because I think care is a really key word. Yes. You know, right. If you're going to get people to interact with the stuff that you're doing out there, give them a reason to care yeah. in one way or another. Okay. And here's, here's another exercise that people could do, completely free service. Uh, and it will allow them to see the sorts of stories that journalists are writing and they're looking for quotes from real people. Um, and that's helperreporter.com. Now, if you sign up to that, you get an email three times a day, which usually has about 60 queries in each one from journalists. And they're looking for people to um, uh, quote on that. So I read uh, Harold this morning, for instance, and there was uh, a food journal uh, looking for someone to talk about barbecues. So if you made barbecues or you were interested in real wood barbecues, that's the sort of thing that you would apply to. So I would really recommend everybody to sign up for helperreporter.com and you will then see the types of questions that journalists want answers to and you'll get a feel for it. And you know what? If you respond, you might even get editorial coverage. And it's used by people like the New York Times um, and some of the leading Wall Street Journal uses it, um, NBC, I believe, use, there's a lot of top, top media use helperreporter.com, and it's a great education. But I would really say, let's keep focus, let's learn about what journalists are after. Mm. And then um, once we've got that knowledge, then we can start being a little bit cleverer down the road with what we're doing. Okay. What's your view on social media with regard to promoting your website? Because I, I know I, I have this idea that you can you can spend all day on Facebook or Twitter or any of the other smaller social media networks coming out 
And it's possible to do that and achieve absolutely nothing. You get yes. followed by thousands of people who don't exist. Yes. And send out messages that aren't read. So is it possible to use social media effectively to support your your website promotion? Yes, it is. And again, it all comes down to quality. Same as anything. You're not interested, you should not be interested in the number of followers you have, the number of likes. That's all nonsense. So you could be followed by six incredibly influential people. Well, and that's all that matters. Then that's fantastic. No, it's not all that matters. It's one of the things that that, that does matter. So yeah, it, it, those six influencers, that's great. But they're not the only people you should be chasing. What about your customers? What about people who are writing about your product? You should be engaging with those. You should follow those people. DM them. Um, and also keep an eye on what they're tweeting, what they're saying about your company. So it's so it's not just a platform for shouting out about, about yourself. Not. It's a platform again for listening. Yes, and for listening what people are saying. And the big thing there is to respond immediately. So if someone says something great about your company, well, respond immediately. You'll get a little notification saying such and such is mentioned, mentioned you. So reply. I'm saying thank you very much for the retweet or for the mention. Uh, much appreciated. That's all you have to do. Well, sorry to hear you've had problems. Yeah. Can we contact you to help you? That, that, that's right. That's right. And it's a great um, uh, customer service too. So if someone's got a problem with your product, we'll jump in there straight away and say, dreadfully sorry for your uh, problem. We are working to put it right straight away. But of course, what you've got to do is you have to work put it right yeah because all of this is transparent so some people put forward social media as a magic bullet it's not a magic bullet in terms of doing this but it is a very very um useful tool and here's the way that i like to look at it so suppose you find a hundred blogs in your industry that you would like links from well uh, in the past, what we would have to have done would be send an email um, to someone that we didn't really have a relationship with. However, using social media, we can then find out the people behind each of those blogs and the social media that they use. So it is then uh, a very good idea to either follow them or like them or retweet or recommend them because that starts to build a relationship. Mm. So once you've got that relationship of engagement, then they're much more likely to respond to any um, cry for help that you might, or any request for help that you have. So be helpful, first of all. Mm. Identify, say, those 100 blogs, then use social media to find the people behind those blogs and then build a relationship with them before you seek their help in any way. And what it really means is that there's no more cold calls when you're building. You don't have to make those approaches to people that you don't really know because mm. you can build a relationship with them on Twitter mm. or what other whatever other social media they use. And, and do it in a completely genuine way. Absolutely. So you're not pretending to be anyone else. Absolutely. So when a great post comes out, you can say, this is a fantastic post by whoever it is that you retweet it. So if they see that you've done that, they think, who's this guy? And they look at your timeline. And if that is done with integrity, if your recent posts, not just loads of retweeting everybody else, but you're actually you know, being helpful, being useful and adding value, yep. then they may follow you either straight away, maybe not straight away, maybe down the line, but it doesn't matter. Then, you know, something you could do as well in the future is, if you see a really great post that somebody does who's very influential, you could either do a reaction to that or a follow-up to that, expand on it and say, this was inspired by whoever's post from yes. August. Um, I That got me thinking, and I've done a little bit of research, and here's, here's some more stuff to add to it. Uh -huh. Then what you can do is contact that person and say, I've just done a follow-up piece to that thing that you yep. wrote, yep. Um, which I thought was absolutely fantastic, but I did have a couple of issues. Tell me what you think. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So this is a fantastic way to enter into a conversation, but that must be done with a purpose. This is not a magic bullet. 
you can spend hours wasting your time. Mm. Do things with a purpose. Don't overdo it. So Engage properly. If, if somebody was to say, how much time per day should I spend on the social media side? Is there an answer to that? Well, that really d depends. Say if you're a large company with a, a, a lot of customers uh, online, like say, we're Tracker. Well, you need to have your s customer service people keeping an eye out for any comment that appears about your company. So that's a 24-hour job. Mm -hmm. Because the sooner your son responds to problems, the better. Yep. Uh, and the sooner you thank people for favors that they've done, the better as well. So if you've got a large volume of business online and if people are commenting on you, then it's a continuous thing that you need to do. And um, if, if you're a, a small business owner, well, one of the, one you know, of the things that I would you say. And you've, that's one of your jobs among all of these things, you know, writing blog posts. Yes. But again, you can combine those, for instance, um, uh, half an hour in the morning, just checking your news feeds for interesting articles and stuff like that and retweeting uh, three or four of them within that half hour. That's, that's, that's a good, useful way uh, to do that. But then put it aside. So plan your day out. See what time you have got available. And um, then don't go past that. Of course, the other thing that you can do is if there is someone within your company who's got a real talent and a love for this, well, let them have the responsibility for doing it. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. So um, I think it's worth then recapping all, all the things that we've, that we've covered. So we, I think we started off by saying that web technology is becoming a lot more accessible, a lot simpler, a lot cheaper, a lot quicker. It really is in the hands of everybody now. So um, you should have a website, but you've got to know why you want a website before you do it. You know, have, have a reason, have a goal. And some of the themes that are coming out here is listen. Listen to what your real customers and your real prospects are actually saying. Then make really useful content about that. So it's, it, all, it all sounds like we're engaging in a conversation. Mm -hmm. You're listening, you're responding, you're giving people a reason to enter the conversation, to join in with you. We use um, blog posts, we use guest blog posts, possibly press releases, uh, social media, help a reporter. All of these are, are tools for helping to get your message out into the world, but it's not a case of just saying me, 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 me. Yeah. It's a case of saying, this is a concern, this is a solution, you know, listening, responding, constantly learning. And pu the publishing, when you publish a website, that isn't something that happens on a particular day. This is something that is a continual process. That's, that's right. And I'll, I'll finish with one uh, last point, and that is don't be afraid of making mistakes. Really, you know, because you if you make a mistake, you can put it right. But don't be afraid of making mistakes. And my favorite definition of an expert is simply this. An expert is someone who has made more mistakes than anybody else. <laughs> and when you think about what a clever statement that is, mm. because that's how you get expertise, by making mistakes and learning from them and doing better the next time. Yeah. So, so don't be afraid to start this. The technology can be scary for, for all of us because no, nobody understands it fully. And you're not meant to understand how the search engines work. So, you know, to some degree, we can just forget about that and just carry on. Just be, be yourself, but get out there, be active, publish, keep publishing, write you know, with vigor and discipline, and don't stop. That's right. And, you know, the tips that we've given in this talk, they're not difficult. You know, they're simple and straightforward. But if people follow those, they will be doing what 90% of their customer, of their competitors aren't doing. Yeah. And that will give them advantage. It's worthwhile investing in this. Yeah. And, and the difference between just being one of the also rounds and actually becoming noticed and, and, and starting to take off can be, be very slight. You know, there's a lot of websites, awful lot of websites out there that are doing, like you say, none of this stuff. Uh -huh. And just by starting and starting to build that 
that system and get your flywheel moving, you could find it taking off. And uh, excellent. It shouldn't take too long. Thank you very, very much for that. Thank you much for the opportunity. Um, I hope it's been very useful for, for everyone else. Great. Okay. Thank Cheers you, Ben. <laughs>